Welcome, everyone, to the Spark the Genius podcast. I'm your host, Spark the Genius, and I'm here to spark the genius within you. That's my intro. My real name is Josh Rackless. Sometimes I go by Celebrity Josh. So we'll just see, uh, we'll see what I wind up called by the end of this. Today, Monday, September 19th, the day after TIFF, we cannot get enough of TIFF at the Toronto International Film Festival. So we've got a TIFF uh uh, person, somebody who's involved in TIFF, Kalesan Kaleshelvan. Uh, Wait, let me try again. Kalesan Kaleshelvan. No. Okay, you tell me. Uh, that's pretty close, man. It's Kalesan Kaleshelvan. Kalesan Kaleshelvan. Yeah. That's what I meant. That was going to be my <laughs> next guess. Awesome. Well, welcome. I am still in Toronto, and you are sort of in Toronto as well, but just a bit further north so we're doing this online and um it's very exciting to have you are you uh, in tiff with tiff tiff with dual with, with dual? sure a little bit i mean it's also yeah. been a lot so i'm trying to wind down from all the tiff activity it's and yeah. get some rest you know uh and <laughs> digging into work for all the future things all oh, right the, the world still keeps spinning that's what i'm trying to realize i'm like oh my god it's so sad like i feel like it's the most fun thing it's like tiff and all these creative things and meeting people everywhere and i'm like oh i don't want to do the rest of my life now but it's, <laughs> of course there's still there's other festivals there's other creative things to work on don't have to be like that was that was the end of everything it doesn't stop yeah no so all right well first of all you are a composer and classically trained pianist based in toronto your compositional practice spans multiple disciplines drawing from film dance theater installation and deals with themes of translation and transference I may or may not be reading this off your website. Um, <laughs> named by Ludwig Van as one of six emerging Canadian composers to keep an eye on. So that's probably not the actual Beethoven because he's been passed away for a while. He's not around anymore, no. no but there's yeah. probably some kind of magazine or website named after him. And, yep. uh, and there's lots going on. So for TIFF, it says 2022 Kalesan. Did I say that right? Kalesan, yeah. Kalesan has scored feature films that have pre premiered at uh, TIFF, This Place, and the Fantasia Film Festival, The Protector. Um, okay, so that's this year. So what did you have in TIFF? I think you had two things, in, or am I making that up? The film I had in TIFF uh, is just the one film. Uh, okay. It's called This Place, directed by VT90. Oh, okay. And uh, how did that do in the festival? Uh, it did It did really well, man. Like um, The audiences responded really well to it. It starred Stavry Jacobs, who is also a huge writing star right now. Um, and it's a film that sort of celebrates Toronto and the people in it and all the places they come from and what they bring to this place. And um, Yeah, it's been great getting to see a lot of the emotional responses to the film uh, and the music, and it's just been a pleasure to be a part of it. Oh, man, I just looked up Devery Jacobs. 224,000 Instagram followers. So she, she's not screwing around. Oh, well, my God. yeah. She's on a new Marvel show now called Echo. And um, she was in one of the stars of Reservation Dogs. And she helped co write or write some of the episodes of the second season under Taika Watiti. She's, she's oh. very big. Yeah. Uh, wow. Yeah. Oh, no. I see the picture on Instagram of uh, Echo. I don't even yes. think I've heard of it. But I think I've just been. It hasn't come out yet. It's, it's on yeah. the way. Yeah. I've been out of the loop. Usually I'm up on all these announcements and stuff, but I think just getting ready for TIFF and being all stressed. And Oh, it was only two days ago, this announcement. Anyways, okay. So, yes, it's not. I'm not that out of the loop. But there's <laughs> there's that Marvel guy. What is that? Feige? Is that his name? Uh, Kevin Feige. Sure, yeah, it yeah. looks like he's announcing her. Oh, my God. That's insane. Yeah. All right. So I'm one degree separation now from... Uh, from a Marvel star. It's very <laughs> sure. exciting. Okay, so this is a big deal. And uh, how did you wind up scoring it? Or uh, hey, sco yeah. uh, scoring it in both senses of the words. Yeah, I mean, uh, Naini, the director, and I uh, met at the Canadian Film Centre. We were both in residence there. She was part of the director's lab, and I was part of the Slate Music residency that was happening. And um, we kind of met, and we just really hit it off. We kind of spoke about... You know, our upbringings, we were both born and raised in Scarborough, uh, Toronto, and what it was like being Tomo kids there. And then we just really liked the same movies and vibed on music and stuff. Then eventually she kind of was like, I've been working on this film for some time now, uh, for a few years, and getting it off the ground. It's her first debut feature. 
um, and she's looking for a composer, and she she asked me uh, to try some things and look at us. Now we're at TIFF, so. Oh my gosh, that's yeah. crazy! I've been like, like during the pandemic when I'm like, oh, what do I do with my life? Um, you know, what, should I pursue different things? I I actually emailed the Canadian Film Center. I was trying to look into, you know, what programs would there be for me, kind of thing. And it just that shows how good it is. Like e- even just aside from you know, learning your craft and everything, you get to network with people that you could future future work with. Totally, they've been so great at building community that way, and you kind of just. Lo- Get, it's a great way to find like-minded people and people that you know um, you can build careers with, uh, wow. and that's been my experience. And yeah, just just a great place and a home for that kind of thing. How long is the program there? Uh, it depends on what you're there for. So I mean, yeah. when I was uh, the music program that I was the residency that was in is supposed to be six months, but when we were doing it, the pandemic kind of hit, so things got stretched like crazy and. Oh. Uh, it started off like over the over Zoom, and then in person things happened, and then what was able to be shot and recorded was kind of crazy. So yeah. it's been going for some time, but I think normally on a normal year it's a six month thing. Well, that's not bad. I was thinking, oh, you know, I'd have to commit three years, and I'll be no in, in retirement home by then. Well, maybe <laughs> no. maybe I'll apply. Maybe I'll try screenwriting, or I don't even know what else directing. I don't know. I'd have to see. I haven't really directed much, but oh man, it would be my dream. I just yeah, I want to I want to reboot my life. I want to restart. I want to go back to the beginning and be like, actually, uh, this is what I want to do. So I've been working in advertising and nice. m- met a lot of directors and actors and all this, and I've done my little acting and stuff in the meantime but never really went full on and just being at the festival i realized oh god i love film so much i want to be part of this and i don't want to just be like somebody standing outside trying to get a signature like an autograph from harry styles i want to be like no i want to be part of it and making things and stuff so yeah it's hard not to be swept by the spirit of tiffing you know and everyone yeah. just a lot of young creative idealists out yes. on king street it's it's hard that energy is amazing what were you doing like before um the the film center like how did you decide like to get into that were you already doing composing and stuff uh yeah i mean like my career is a little circuitous like uh i was always into music uh as a child you know i was kind of over programmed brown kid sent to all my music lessons as a pianist and a flautist and a percussionist uh um and uh and basically, I just really loved a lot of classical music and film music and stuff. So I would just write things for people and people knew that in high school and stuff. But I went to university for my education was in uh, biochem and I'm a biochem major and I worked in like cancer research for some time uh, while doing music things on the side. Uh, and eventually I just came to terms with the fact that, oh, am I really happy doing this? uh and and decided to take the full plunge into music and i've been uh like since then i've been writing music for theater dance film and concert music uh of course uh so yeah it's been around for a while um uh, and just now this is my second feature this place which has been exciting yeah. uh and i've gotten to just get to work with a lot of different institutions i was part of the sundance institutes uh, one of the six composers that was part of their lab in 21, uh, which was amazing. Uh, and a lot of my practices also outside of film. I recently had a piece premiere at the for a string quartet at the BAMF Center uh, and had some pieces premiere this year. So um, it's been a real mix of things, but film is a huge love of mine, uh, always has been, and it's exciting to be working on it now. That's so cool. A lot of, you know, we always say in advertising, well, it's not a big deal. We're not curing cancer, but you were curing cancer. <laughs> but then I'm, but I'm glad that you had, you know, you were able to look at your life and go, hmm, you know, what do I want to put all my time and energy? Like, what do I want my life to be? Right? Like a lot of totally. people, including myself, just keep trucking because this is the one thing I started and you don't really sit back and go, wait a minute, wait a minute. Like, do I love this so much that every morning I want to be doing this? And I, I love music too. Somebody showed me a few chords on a guitar in university and I was like, oh, I'm writing songs. And I probably would have been happy to be like, okay, this is what I do. Every morning I'm writing a new song and entertaining people and putting my whole energy into that. It never occurred to me until like decades later now. And I'm like, oh, what if I'd done that? Or in a film or whatever. We can always, you know, restart or whatever. But but I'm glad you're you're living your dream, making music in so many venues. That's so cool. Yeah, man. I think it's just about finding where your frequencies resonate the most, right? And then... Yeah when you find that and it feels right, then you just keep moving forward in that and 
things click, I think. At least that seems to be my experience for now. Yeah, seems to be working for you. So <laughs> you, you did this film, and then the film got into TIFF, and then what, uh, what became your involvement? Like, were you at TIFF? Were you at the screenings? Were you doing interviews? Yeah, uh, I was at the screenings. Uh, we had our premiere last. Uh, no, I don't know. Not two Fridays ago. Yeah, where's time? Was first the first Friday of TIFF. Yeah, so uh, that would have been September 9th, So like ten days ago. Yeah. Yeah. Ten, wow. Yeah. TIFF goes yeah. around for a while. Jeez. Um, well, so but you was... know what? I noticed it kind of after the first weekend, it kind of dies off. I didn't yeah. realize until sort of the Thursday of it. Like after a week, I'm like, oh, it's not just me trying to get a red carpet. You should be emailing the publicist, trying to get interviews so you can sit down and chat with people and actually have good talks. And by the time I was emailing Thursday morning, everybody was out of town. Like there was just like one or two people like, oh, yeah, we're still kind of here. Um, so now I know for next time or for future festivals. But but yeah, it, it goes a long time, but it's <laughs> not really. <Yeah. laughs> well, everyone flies in just for the first few, yeah. the first weekend in a few days, right? And then, yeah. and then it's mostly just the Toronto folks that are still doing the TIFF things at the end. I think the second half of TIFF is more about watching the films you want to watch. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. The first weekend is everyone networking and hitting the parties and all that stuff. Now um, I get it. And I should know so. this. I was living in the TIFF building for 10 years, but I never really <laughs> sort of analyzed what goes on. It was just kind of overwhelming. And then, but yeah, that's kind of what it is. Jennifer Lawrence, Steven Spielberg, they're all here on the first weekend. So woo! Yeah. But then, yeah, even Saturday, Sunday, there was still people but everybody's going to the movies they've heard about and going to see the movies and yeah, exactly so. and you know usually even my thing with tiff is like my thing is i mean the big movies are always great but it's the small movies that you're not sure when you're gonna ever see yeah uh, again those are the ones to catch because some of these like you know knives out which i heard is a lot of fun but it's going to be on netflix in like two weeks yeah so uh it's being yeah learning tiff strategy is a whole thing man it's it's yeah so it, that i and I used to write the ads for TIFF years and years ago, and they would walk around and be like, here, you want some tickets? I'm like, oh, I'll take that, sure. I don't know what that is. And I managed to, what did I see? Um, uh, was it called Sideways or what, about wine or something? And I just Oh, my went, God, yes. Yeah, and I, just, like, I didn't know what it was. Yeah, and yeah. I just like, oh, wow, that was kind of cool to see. Um, so I kind of lucked out a couple of times. But, yeah, I never really thought about it as a plan, and I never thought about, oh, you could actually go interview people. So it's all stuff I've been learning over, like, 15 years. But... Um, it's amazing. Say, but yeah, I lucked out even, uh, I didn't really go to anything. I went to one movie, The Swimmers, on the first night, and then I was just like, ah, I just got to go interview people, like doing red carpets. But then I met this woman, Laura, who, uh, just on Instagram, I was messaging people, and she had a short film, and I went and saw her short film. And I think in that little bit, there was one about a flight attendant, and I was like, oh, that was interesting. And then uh, the award show yesterday, it wound up winning Best uh, Short or something like that, and I interviewed the director quickly, and I'm like, oh. So out of hundreds of films, I happened to see one short film compilation and then a winner was in there. So I'm like, that kind of, I don't know. It's kind of like hitting the lottery ticket. Yeah. That's amazing. Wow. Yeah. And I'm sure I never would have seen that short otherwise kind of thing. So yeah, it's like right. these little ones that, you know, you can go see Steven Spielberg's movie anytime probably, but uh, yeah. Or, or mix it up, you know? And even actually I interviewed a, a director from the Philippines and, and she had her last, she did the last Midnight Madness night and then she New wound Road up. will never die, right? Yeah. And thing. that wound up winning an award at, at the thing too. And I'm like, oh yeah, my gosh. Yeah, I've been trying to catch that, but the timings didn't quite work out for me. I heard yeah. amazing things about that film. Yeah. And that was cool. Good. And yeah. it's by the end of it, like she had the last night Midnight Madness, like, you know. She was the no... first and the last, I think. She got two Midnight Madness screenings. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, good for her. And then, yeah, so there was kind of nobody at the end there, I was sort of hanging out and I got to say hi to her. I don't think they really had an official carpet kind of thing as opposed right. to like, you know, for the Weird Al, they had dancers. And, I mean, it was Daniel Radcliffe <laughs> yeah. as well kind of thing. So it's kind of interesting how it sort of peters out at the end too. It's like, where's all the media? Well, they flew, they're not paying to be here like at the end. So, totally. but, yeah. but if you're a local person, you can sort of stay and be like, Hey, I'm, I'm helping out. I'm covering things. So that's, that's cool. So you, so you got in there. Yeah. You went to, you went to some, I guess you went to the screenings of this place. Yeah. Uh, I did, yeah. I went yeah. to the first and the last, and there were Q and A's, uh, and oh, cool. and I also just got to speak to uh, a lot of the people coming out of it who res and hear them res respond emotionally to the film and the music as well, which was always yeah a little surprising to me, just because it's it's an abstract thing, right? You've been sitting with it by yourself for so long, and then to get to see the film in a room full of people responding to it, and then hearing people tell you what their connection was to the music and the film, it's it reminds you that these things we do are, 
impact people outside of just ourselves and yeah it's a little humbling so for sure and especially music like you know it is a big part of movies but you sort of just experience the movie you wouldn't not a lot of people wouldn't be like mm, yes i like the music like you wouldn't <laughs> think of it as a separate thing right yeah. so so that's cool i mean it's a testament to your work that people would even make a note of that and be like oh no no i really like that what you did there so that's that's pretty cool and yeah, yeah. i mean i feel like with a lot of creative work it's kind of you're alone you're sitting composing in your room or what am i doing um you know if i'm writing a script or or, or even just making YouTube videos, like, yeah, you don't see the people reacting, so it must be very nice to actually get to experience that. Yeah, I mean, it's the craziest thing. A friend was telling me this the other day, and just, you know, like, the actress Rashida Jones in Parks and Recreation, like, mm. you know, it, it's, it's she lives her whole normal life, and then when people, like, come up to her, like, afterwards and, you know, gush about, par like, you know, it's so it's so outside of your actual immediate reality that people are watching what you do. Yeah. Uh, so it's a little crazy when you're in a premiere or when you're interacting with people outside of the film itself. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Crazy. Like even even my little experiences myself. I was acting in a uh, in a movie in Ottawa recently, and one of the crew members is like, "Your voice sounds familiar. Are you, are you celebrity Josh?" And I'm like, "Yeah, that's what I <laughs> sometimes go by." He's like, "I listen to your podcast, but you haven't posted in a while." I'm like, "No, I've been kind of slacking on posting, but I've got lots of interviews." He's like, "Oh, you got to post." I'm like who is this stranger that happens to listen to this thing that I didn't realize anybody listened to kind of thing. So totally. yeah, it's kind of fun. And when I was like 30 years ago, I was using, I was hosting on cable TV shows and that was before the internet. So you didn't know if anybody was watching your stuff, but I remember right. I was in a, a toy store in Eaton center once and I'm just doing voices with a couple of dolls. Like, Oh, I'm Bert and Ernie or whatever. And some girls like, oh, you're Josh from the show. I watch your show every day. My friends can't believe it that I'm, Oh my God, that they're, you know, I've, that I've met you. They're, they aren't going to believe it. And I'm like, wow. So yeah. So I guess to, it's like that because you're filming something and that's your thing, but yeah, it's hard to picture. It's not like, doing a play in front of people where you actually see the people. So, yeah, yeah, totally. Do you play concerts as well? Like in front of live people? Uh, I don't perform as much anymore. Uh, I mostly write for ensembles that perform my work. Oh, that's it. And do you find that fulfilling? I do. Yeah. I really just love, I think I've moved away from the performance space some time ago and I really love the act of writing and, mm -hmm. and creating, uh, as a composer and uh, more, it just starts to stimulate the part of my brain that's fascinated by like architecture and how sounds come together and work mm -hmm. together. It's it's just a really cool thing. So that's where I am right now. Well, that's good. Yeah, because again, everybody's got different things. Like some people want to be Harry Styles, having people scream for them. Other people want to be in the background writing for other people. Some people yeah. do both. Like I, we were talking this week about how like Prince or I don't know. Dolly Parton or something like there's people that are big pop stars in their own right but they also wrote a lot of songs for other people kind of thing so that's an interesting uh, actually I think Taylor Swift is written for other people I don't know like it's sounds like uh, oh, yes yeah, so you, you can all you can always do different kinds of things wow yeah. so what what uh, what are you working on uh, now like what's what's post tiff now <laughs> it's honestly digging into just writing like I'm currently working on uh, another feature film right now um, which I'm excited about, and uh, it's by a really strong filmmaker uh, named Zarar Khan, and it's a film set in Pakistan, so I'm, I'm very excited about it. So uh -huh. kind of in the middle of that, and uh, I'm also working on my debut EP, uh, which is coming up soon. So what? Uh, would that, so that would be a record? Yes. And then, and so what, it was like classical music, or what's it going to be? Uh, it'll be in the in-between genres of sort of experience, experimental uh kind of thing um so it's not it's not you singing it'll just no be like, i'm yeah. not a singer songwriter so yeah. that's not me that's not my music um yeah. but uh it'll be it'll be an interesting uh play of sounds and wow. kind of a mix between yeah kind of the different genres i sort of operate in so um that'll be yeah. so fun because like I, I was thinking about that recently again like yeah i made a little uh, cassette tape with I rented a four track machine when I was in university and I wrote all these songs for a girl and I had an album and I drew the cover and everything yeah and it never occurred to me oh right send it to a radio like or or to a record company or something like you know try to do something with it so they it's now sounds like yeah actually having your own album that you can promote and I don't know what you do with it put it on Spotify or or sell it in the street in CD form I don't know but it sounds like and then you could do the the interview circuit to get your PR person to be like, hey, you know, we've got this new album, you got to interview about it kind of thing. 
Totally. That whole shebang starts again, and it's just like Tiff. Um, ah. No, totally, yeah. It's sort of just finding outlets to put your creative body of work out there, I think. Like, I think, you know, film, the film space demands a certain kind of way of working, and then the concert music space demands another kind of work, way of working, and so to do something like this where it's kind of just me and I get to make the rules and, 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 yeah. and do anything I want is kind of appealing, so kind of seeing what kinds of comes out of that yeah yeah i can see how yeah definitely yeah you know, you know without a director going eh, yeah. and also like for a movie it's got to fit the scenes and stuff it's yeah. not just you like here what music i feel like making but it's nice to be able to exercise both muscles and be like oh but do a bit of this do a bit of that work with totally. people work on my own 100 percent. do you have like a like a studio at home with like a sound paneling and all of that yeah i've got my own studio uh in my in my home yep with all that jazz and all my gear and yeah my, uh upright also which i record on and then some synths all the fun stuff that's so cool that's what i realized too like since i started digital nomading i'm like oh yeah you can interview people on your phone or whatever but it's nice to have a studio like i had panels in my condo that I built for the seat. Like I had somebody build them for the ceiling and the wall so I could do my voice acting, not having to go into a closet or under a blanket. It was just like raw thing. <laughs> yeah. So like having a proper setup, I wound up buying this portable voiceover box that you're supposed to like unfold and then go inside with your, I tried it once. I'm like, I cannot do this. I do not want to squeeze myself into this little box. So now I just go under blankets and stuff, but yeah, having a home studio is very cool. And then you can travel to promote your thing and then come back home and record your, your stuff. Yeah. Pretty much, man. It's always. It's also learning how to be comfortable to be on the go and still ch tap into things, mm -hmm. which I think is sort of the life of an artist. But also, home is home, and your studio is is your special space, right, for anyone. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's always nice to be back in that. That's cool. Yeah, I love reading about like celebrities, like I don't know, Bon Jovi or Prince, with their home, stu their crazy studios where they can invite yeah. people in and. <laughs> yeah. Do Some of that, stuff. when you see them, it's just like, it's insane uh, how, how, how amazing they are. Um, yeah, I mean, why wouldn't you? If you've got all the money and that's right. what you love doing, why not build this thing? Yeah. Do you, uh, do you play all the instruments yourself then or do you bring other people in and you're like, here, play the oboe or something? Uh, yeah, like in those cases, I usually bring musicians in. Like I'm a yeah. pianist uh, so, yeah. and I, I tinker with other things, but mostly like, like with this place and stuff, uh, we brought in a string quartet. We oh, wow. recorded with an oboist. There's a lot of different musicians. There was a brass quartet. Um, there was another singer. So it was just a lot of uh, live musicians that recorded on this. And that was very important to the work. Yeah. Uh, and it brought that quality to it. So, yeah. I love working with musicians. I think that's how you discover things. And, yeah. And find new colors to play with. Yeah. I imagine it might be like like acting or like directing a film like the actor is going to bring something that wasn't in the script like oh right now we're bringing it to like you know it's they've got their own ideas totally i mean like it's it's often with a certain kind of musicians i write everything and it's notated and scored and you give sheets to uh, either charts or sheet music to musicians and then in the recording of it we sometimes try things and we play with options like what if you did it this way or what if you did it that way mm -hmm. and that discovery part is always always the best part of the process wow so fun do you ever film them like just so you've got like you know dvd extras or, or like for the music <laughs> video or whatever yeah i, I have sometimes not always yeah. sometimes you just need to get the recording done like yeah, the, yeah. The deadline and and you know you've got things for a few hours or whatever yeah. it is uh but definitely i love i i've got stashed videos of just us goofing around yeah yeah in sessions uh which is always great and then when you're like the Beatles or whatever, they'll be like, oh, look, we got this archival footage. We've got the, the Calisan. Peter Jackson makes a documentary about my life. Yes, that's Exactly. It. He'll be I'd like, be where's, all the, with where's all the clips? Yeah. <laughs> There's no excuse now. Like, was it um, Val Kilmer just happened to be filming his life on VHS tapes and stuff. But now it's like everybody's got their clips that you can dig up as long as you don't drop your phone and lose it all. Yeah, it's weird because I think everything we're doing in our lives is, is so recorded and we don't even know about it. Like, yeah. We're so quick to pack, get up our phones and take a picture or a video of things, and then we don't look at it forever. Yeah. Um, so it's a weird world we live in where everything is being documented, and then it's always this culture of post-death. How do we, I don't know, dig into that? Post-death? Is that what you said? Well, yeah. I mean, like, you oh. know, when artists have passed away, like, there's oh, right. this whole culture of, like, exploiting every piece of things yeah. that they had. and. 
this yeah. was you know it happens to musicians where like we people dig into their drives and see like every rough sketch oh right demo they do and let's just put it out there right because they're uh, hungry for we, we need a new album so now yeah. we've got yeah but those were never designed to be shared to the public either those yeah were, like things that were just for the artists so, yeah uh but that's the world we live in right we yeah. kind of mine everything from an artist or any like it's a capitalist thing right even past yeah, for sure point but yeah and their estate wants to keep making some money and whatever yes that's huge yeah, yeah they just put out i think i saw an ad for like the new album from tragically hip i'm like the what but it's some <laughs> recording from something a long time ago yeah but i i was scrolling through instagram yesterday and i'm just like and i see a, a picture and i'm like that looks like me and i'm like that is me who the hell is andrew or whatever and i had to look at this and i realized oh it's a comedy show in ottawa and i happen to be sitting there and he posted a picture or whatever but it's like yeah there's pictures out there of you that you didn't even no. And oh, I saw a yeah. reporter, um, I was looking at her feed yesterday. I'm like, oh, there's a picture of me with Keegan-Michael Key, like that she had tweeted out, but didn't tag me or whatever. And I'm like, oh, so every now and then you'll see stuff about you out there. And you're like, wow, that's totally. weird. Yeah, it's yeah. weird. I'm always afraid to Google myself for exactly this reason, because yeah. <laughs> who knows what's out there, you know? Exactly. I figure, I guess the, the huge, huge stars must get to the point where they're like, you know what? they're not going to worry about it. Like there's going to be in billions of posts about Joe Biden or Leonardo DiCaprio or whatever, that they can't start worrying about every little thing. Right. Uh, uh, but, but Keegan Michael did say he, uh, he runs his own Instagram and I can DM him. So wow. we'll see. We'll see. Although, and then I said, so I can message you every morning. Like when I wake up, I said, no, no, let's take it slow. Like I don't need, let's, uh, let's <laughs> chill out for a minute. And I'm like, okay. So, so we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, and did you, uh, like, do other interviews for TIFF? Like, this, how does the, all the publicity work and all that? Yeah, it's, uh, I've been doing a bunch, actually, and that's sometimes a lot. I'm not used to all this press condensed into yeah. a few days. But um, it's been, it's been, yeah, it's been a lot, but also good getting to just talk about yeah. film and music yeah. and... Well, that's thing. what you get for, you know, connecting to a Marvel related type <laughs> of thing. You're going to now if you Google yourself, if you, you know, you'd be you'd probably show up everywhere. That's kind of fun. Oh, man. Are you going to be involved in I guess I mean, this movie must be going around to other film festivals. Do you, are you going to travel to those or get involved? I guess you got your own stuff now. Yeah, I mean, it just really depends on schedules. I mean, yeah. I'd love to support the film and the team and yeah. and 90 and, um, you know, wishing her all the best and stuff. But. You know, yeah. if there's ever a cool trip to some cool yeah, festival, I'm always down to go. Exactly. You don't, need, has to work out. you don't need to go to the, the this festival in the middle of the nowhere. But everybody's like, oh, wait, there's one in France. There's one in L.A. I might be able to come down. Yeah. yeah. The, yeah. Fans, yeah the cool yeah. cool cities, I'll, I'll come down. Why not? Exactly. All right. Well, you can send me as your ambassador to the other ones. It'd be like accepting the composing award on behalf. Is, uh, Done. Is spark the genius. Amazing. <laughs> I love that. I'm going to give your name like right after this. This is awesome. great. Awesome. Because even at the award show yesterday, there were so many of people like, you know, here's a note I, I'm reading because they couldn't be here. So yeah. I, maybe that could be my career. That I could be the official, you know, uh, reading the note on behalf of people. Yeah, that's that's cool. I'm surprised that's not there. Yeah, right? why not? Why I isn't that a thing? you should start that, man. Like, All right. It sounds Look very promising. Excellent. Yeah. I love when I come up with a, you know, collaborating, coming up with an idea in an interview with creative it's, people. It ha we, you heard it here first, folks. This we is... have sparked the genius within <laughs> ourselves. Excellent. Amazing. Amazing. Well, thank you so much. And, uh, you know, oh, I was going to say, like, if I have a, like a song I wrote with a few chords or something, maybe, maybe we could collab sometime. You could be like, oh, yeah, I can put a little piano in there and make it like all fancy, fancy. I love that. Send uh -huh. it my way, man. I'm always looking for people to have music hangs with so it's that's great. great i used to record in the bathroom and in, in residence and university and for the echoes and stuff and we'd have a little four ta tape and stuff but now you could just record something throw it on tiktok throw it on spotify <laughs> see, see what happens it's yeah it's weird the world we live in it's never been easier to try or start making music but yeah that's yeah. also what makes it so exciting it's accessible now yeah yeah like yeah. i mean that's why i keep thinking it's like why don't i just take some of my old songs and just play 30 seconds of it a day on TikTok. Here's a mini sample of my love song or whatever and just uh, just get it out there. Because, yeah, when I was young, it's like, what am I going to do with this cassette tape? Like, people would come to my res room or whatever and then, like, well, that's it. But now, there's no excuse. So No excuse. Get, get it out there, man. Out there. Exactly. I'm looking forward to hearing it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. And, uh, yeah. Um, 
Everybody follow. Are you on the gram? Should people follow you on social media? Follow me on the social media, the gram. Yeah, it's Kalaisan13. K A L A I S A N 1 3. Oh, just like Taylor Swift 13. Isn't that her thing? <laughs> Is it? I well, think so. Yes. Like, Taylor Swift and I are the same person. It's yeah, exactly. Scary. Aha! T- big twist ending Spoilers. to this interview. Yes. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, thanks so much. We'll talk to you later. Sounds good. Thanks, Josh.